was the late afternoon sun that was taking on the gold the palace stocks. Fabian and his brother Vidal was out and set on the fields. Fabian, the eldest, has his smooth and unbroken strokes that harvested so many palace stocks before sundown. But then, he stopped and the palace stocks fell on the ground. It is almost time for us to harvest, and yet he still have time to idle? How hard-headed can he be? <laughs> what a pompous fool. He is always like that because he knows how good-looking he is, and yet all of the girls in the town runs after him? <laughs> how can brother work that fast all day without pausing for a rest? Harvest time is almost we shall be in need of many carabas, yet the planting season will be on us. Milia's father has five carabas. Why don't you ask to marry her? I'm sure Milia will approve of your proposal. Uh, I guess I have to go. Good luck to your harvest, Fabian, and also to you. Here's your Uh, it is my model. How are you, Vidal? Well, I, uh, well, I'm fine, madam. From now on, you must work for me every morning. Possibly all day. Very well. Everything as you please. Your brother that you mentioned earlier, Vidal. Oh, I see. You have a splendid arm. Thank you. But if you may excuse us, we and Bidar have to go home now. Come. It was hard for Bidal to talk to his own brother. He kept on thinking how good his brother is, but he's always afraid of his brother. There was something terrible in the way he determined things, how he always brought them to pass, how he disregarded the soft and beautiful things in his life. His brother wants those beautiful things crushed, trampled, and destroyed. There was Tina. He knew his brother did not truly really like her, but Tina had some lads, the reason why Fabian married Tina. He wondered what could touch his brother. On the other hand, the stiffness, the peace of the twilight landscape was maddening Fabian. The beauty of the woman earlier is still clinging to him. He had never seen anyone like her. She was not exactly neither young nor beautiful. It was clear how he kept on thinking about her, on remembering the scent of her perfume, the brush of her dress against him and the look of her eyes to his arms. His thoughts passed when he noticed Vidal trying to pick up a moth. He hurriedly ran to his brother and killed the insect. Why are you like that? Things are in my way. That, that destroying things that are beautiful like moths? If the dust from the wings of a moth gets in your eyes, you will be blind. That is not the reason. Things have a beautiful way. I feel when I feel a hurt. So, um... Brother, what do you think of Miss Francia? She was a relative of the master, I think. A cousin, maybe. Brother, her loveliness is the one that I cannot understand. When one talked to her forever so long in the pasio, many dreams, many desires come to me. I am lost, but I'm glad I am lost. Fabian cleansed himself in the batalan of his home. Supper was ready on the table. Tina was still inside the room and wouldn't eat yet. Fabian glanced everything inside the room. your age, I was already married. This is the time you should be settling down now. There is Milia. I have no desire to marry her, nor anybody else, just for five calabows. Janine, Fabian's four-year-old daughter, was playing Ciclot by herself. Bidal went inside his room, but he could still see the young girl playing. Janine threw a pebble in the air. Bidal caught it and what give it up. <laughs> Trinine pinched, bit, and shook his pants furiously while he laughed on great amusement. But the very pretty woman training is going to be. Look at her skin, white as rice grains, and her nose, 
What a high bridge! <laughs> You're going to be a proud lady. And what a deep, dark eyes. Let me see, let me see. Oh, you have a little mo on your lips. That means you are very talkative. Vidal, you will wake up the baby. Tone down your voice. Why did you braid her hair? But she's so pretty with her curls free that way. We should trim it. Don't you know how much she loves her hair? No, I don't like it. I'm gonna do it before going work tomorrow. She will go in to cry about her hair. She'll get over it soon. Vidal beat his lips in anger. He retired to his room and fell into a deep sleep, unbroken, till after dawn when he heard the sobs of a child. Falling off the floor, he saw dark curls from Trinine's hair. Girl. It's okay. Your hair will go sooner. But father, he will still cut it short. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't let it happen again. Vidal avoided his brother from that morning. He doesn't want to talk about Milia. In the evening after supper, he stood by the window and told a tale about Miss Prancha to the quiet group. His brother's eyes was filled with fury. If that look that quiver of boys had been a moth, a curl on the dark hair of his daughter, now more than ever he was determined to have Milia in his home as his brother's wife. Fabian thought to himself that day he knew he had to act once. Means Prancha would leave within two days and she wanted Vidal to go with her. She will pay me more than I can earn here and help me get a position there. I'm going to be near her. I am going. And live the life of a servant? What of that? I will be near her always. Why do you wish to be near her? Fabian went to see Miss Prancha. Again, as it ever would be, he was amazed by the loveliness of the lady that his body tense and flexed as he gathered in at a glance all the marble of her beauty. She smiled at him graciously. He did not know how he worded his thoughts, but he succeeded in making her understand that Vidal could not go with her. Miss Prancha said nothing, but the look in her face against what she That's heard. When Fabian returned, Vidal was at the Batalan, brooding over a crumpled 20 peso bill. Soon, all your sampagaitas and gambas will be gone. My dear sister, for I shall see you in Emilia every night, and her father. He watched Fabian cleansing his face and arms and later wondered why it took his brother that long to wash his arms, why he was rubbing them as hard as that. <laughs>